He's uh, the New York Times bestselling author. He's won a couple of Pulitzer Prizes, and he wrote When Pride Still Mattered, uh, Life of Vince Lombardi, David Moranis. David, thanks for joining us. I'm sure you're being called by a lot of people as you uh, remember Bart Starr, and I, you were the first guy I thought of when I heard that he passed. I thought that you would have some stories to uh, enlighten the audience on just who and what Bart Starr was all about. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, Dan, and thanks for calling. I actually happen to be in Wisconsin on book tour, and uh, this whole state seems to be in mourning. It's like all Packer flags are at half-mast. Um, but, uh, yeah, memories of Bart Starr are, are pre go pretty deep here. You know, um, Brett Favre is kind of a phenomenon, and and, and uh, Aaron Rodgers is brilliant, and the old glory years Packers from Taylor and Horning all had their special moments. But really – Bart Starr is kind of the foundational legend of this team, along with Vince Lombardi, I would say. But you also had a couple of characters on there that, you know, Lombardi being the disciplinarian, and then you had Horning and, you know, the wide receivers like to get after it a little bit, and I'm sure some other guys. But Bart Starr just felt like he was the right guy at the right place for the right coach. Uh, how, how do you explain Starr to somebody who never saw him? You know, he was on the Packers for three years before Lombardi got there, but you're absolutely right. They were a perfect match. So, you know, some people would say that Lombardi made Star, but Star also made Lombardi. Mm. It was as though, uh, you know, they opened up Bart Starr's brain and poured all of Lombardi's knowledge into it, and he, he knew how to handle that. There was a moment early in his uh, reign with Lombardi when, when he threw an interception and Vince just chewed him out, like he chewed out everybody else in front of the whole team. And Bart uh, afterwards asked to meet with Lombardi privately and said, coach, you know, you want me to be your leader. If I'm going to be the leader of the team, you can't do that in public. I'll take whatever you want in private, but don't ever do it in public again. And any Packer you will talk to from those years would say that, that Star was the ultimate leader. I also mentioned there are certain quarterbacks who benefited from winning a Super Bowl. I don't know if Bart Starr makes it to the Hall of Fame if he doesn't win those first two, uh, because it's a di it's a different coronation. Uh, what do you think of that? Well, he won five championships in seven years. Yeah, um, but I don't. But, I, so, but, the, but the Super Bowl designation, it's branding with these sports yeah. writers, as opposed to you know, if Frank Ryan won titles with the Cleveland Browns, nobody's going, Frank Ryan deserves to be a Hall of Famer. Oh, you're absolutely right. And people forget two things about the, first of all, the first Super Bowl wasn't even called the Super Bowl. Secondly, uh, it didn't even have, you know, a full stadium. <laughs> but, but third and most important is there was enormous pressure on the Packers to win that game. Um, and Lombardi put all of that pressure onto Bart Starr, who carried it very coolly and, was the MVP for the first two Super Bowls. Yeah, and the, the fact that Starr was able to call his own plays, I believe, is that is that true? It's absolutely true. Wow. You know, the, the, the joke on the Packers, which was a true joke, I mean, it was true, was that Lombardi was the greatest coach Monday through Saturday and was absolutely <laughs> useless on the field on Sunday. You know, you'd see him yelling, grab, 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 can't anybody tackle out there and stuff like that. But... but but basically, Starr was the offensive coach during the games. He called all the plays, including that, of course, iconic final uh, quarterback sneak in the ice bowl. But that call, I mean, I, you know, he's just saying, I guess he says this is the play we're going to call, quarterback sneak. I didn't have, you know, nobody has great footing here. And then I think Lombardi says, all right, uh, call it and let's get out of here. Let's get the hell out of here, of course, <laughs> Lombardi. Um, but not only that, Dan, but it wasn't even in the playbook. There was no quarterback sneak for the Packers. And Chuck Mercine, the fullback, thought he was getting the ball. It was only really Starr and Jerry Kramer who knew what the play was. Oh, really? Starr, yes. The rest of the team didn't know. They said, you see uh, Mercine, you know, going up as though he's going to take the, the handoff and, and score the touchdown. Um, so it was... It was not even in the playbook. So just Jerry uh, Kramer, who was the uh, the guard who was going to be making the block, <laughs> so he was going to follow Kramer, and Kramer and Starr are the only two that knew this? Yes. And, you know, one of the other uh, uh, hidden truths of that moment is that Ken Bowman actually made a great block, too, and gets no credit for it. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, it was it was just the two of them. And it, it also showed something else about Starr, which was he was gutsy. You know, he he's known as sort of just a – 
a, a game manager, but that wasn't him at all. I mean, he he was known for his uh, going for the bomb on fourth and one, and that that I, that quarterback sneak was sort of representative of that part of him as well. I don't know if he got lost in Unitas' shadow, uh, and then Namath came onto the scene, and Lenny Dawson was awesome back then. But was was Star competitive that way? Did he did he care about recognition? Well, I, he cared about winning. Uh, he was much tougher than people think. He had a soft demeanor, but he, you know, he played hurt all the time. He played with um, his mouth bleeding for an entire quarter, um, and he cared deeply about winning. He, he I, I can't say that he cared as much about the, you know, being rated versus the other quarterbacks. Um, he, he'd leave that to others, and he, you know, he wasn't charismatic, except among his teammates, which is what counts uh, in football. If you decide to write another book on a sports figure or team, who would you write it on? Or are you thinking about that? Um, You know, it has to have a larger sociological significance for me. So Clemente was the first great Latin player and heroic humanitarian. Lombardi sort of was the symbol of competition and success in American life. I think the one that interests me the most, but he doesn't want anybody writing about him right now, is Steve Kerr. I think he's a phenomenal story, both his life story and his his coaching. Why doesn't he, he want anybody to, to dive in? Be, I think it's he just doesn't want the distraction for his team. You know, maybe when he's retired, uh, it'll be different, but not right now. Yeah, and he, he's going to go into the Hall of Fame with what he's done with Golden State. And, you know, oh, being, absolutely. Being a role player um, pretty much his entire career, even at – Arizona, and then I think he got cut a few times. He latches on with the Bulls, hits a big jumper with uh, Michael, wins a championship. And then we thought he was going to go co- – remember, he was going to go and coach the Knicks because you can't turn down Phil Jackson in the Knicks. And next you find out, he goes, wait, he's going to Golden State? And then he, well, saw, he that, saw what a lot of us didn't see. He, that shows how smart he is. <laughs> and he's one smart guy. And also, you know, both, what, what happened to his father? Uh, yeah, when he was yeah. assassinated. assassinated in Beirut, uh, the American University, and his, you know, his awareness of the world around him. I think, you know, one of the things I look for, especially if someone I'm writing about is is still alive, is their ability to go deeper. And he definitely can on a lot of subjects. Does Greg Popovich interest you? Yes, he does too. Absolutely, those are the two. I would say. David. Um, I don't know whether he'd let me in the same room with <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> <laughs> or what the conversations would be like. <laughs> you know what? If you like wine and you uh, get a couple of bottles of wine, then I'm going to guess Pop would open up to you. But probably well, when I'll both have... of them are done. And, you know, Kerr working with Popovich is interesting, too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, the two of them are, are from the same mold. David, thank you. I know you're busy and uh, traveling. Uh, safe travels. And uh, thank you for joining us. Great to talk with you, Dan. Thank you. David Moranis, a New York Times bestseller. Uh, he wrote the book, When Pride Still Mattered, A Life of Vince Lombardi. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune in to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV. Stream for free on BR Live or download the Dan Patrick Show app.